Today, we will be answering some of your questions on industrial couplings and belts. Hi, I'm May from Shaftec. Shaftec is one of the leaders in the supply of mechanical parts to heavy industries. In our years of experience, we have encountered many situations of failure due to complacency or just a lack of proper maintenance. This year, we are excited to announce Shaftec's official partnership with Fenner, the leading brand in power transmission. We have invited a product expert from Fenner to share with us some invaluable tips to ensure that your machine components last longer. So let's now welcome Donald. So hi, my name is Donald and I'm the manager of Fenner here in Southeast Asia. And Fenner is a leading brand with more than 150 years of experience and knowledge in this industry. Um, and today, you know, our couplings are known worldwide for their resilience and reliability. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can discuss a bit deeper into this topic. Let's talk about palm oil mill couplings. The most common type of coupling that we see in this industry is the pin and bush coupling. So this is a typical pin and bush coupling. A bush coupling typically consists of two hubs that can be made of different materials. They are fitted with pins with rubber bushes. So we do encounter quite a bit of pin and bush coupling, um, especially in these uh, industries that we've mentioned. Uh, so what do you feel about <laughs> these couplings? I have a good question. So yeah. pin and bush is a very economical coupling in terms of its cost um, and its size, benefit, it's a pretty reasonable coupling. Mm -hmm. It's often used in many OEM applications because yep. they can mm -hmm. apply it as yep. a cost saver. But it doesn't always give you the best lifetime, especially when you get a very dirty application. Um, the pins and bushes basically insert into the hub. So there's a lot of friction and the rubber ends up getting destroyed by the application. So you often have to replace it quite regularly. Um, so when we see a pin and bush, you know, we can't knock it because it's a reasonable design, but we often recommend an upgrade, which is to a tire coupling. So a pin and bush uses pins and bushes in compression, right. whereas a tire coupling uses the rubber in flexion. So it's flexing rubber as opposed to compressing it. So you don't get as much um, abrasive, abrasive wear mm. uh, between the pins and bushes. So in theory, your tire coupling will last longer. Right. Um, another important aspect is when you are installing a pin and bush coupling, mm -hmm. often you have to remove the hubs mm. and pull the equipment apart mm. so you can do maintenance, right? which means you have to put it back together and redo alignment. Right. So this takes time. As you know, time is money, especially when you've got a production manager breathing down your neck. So uh, with a tire coupling, you can actually keep the application in the same position and just squeeze out the elements and wrap it and it back in. Mm. Um, so that's one of the benefits of using a tire coupling. Sounds really, really good. So this coupling is able to withstand high amounts of vibration and it's also able to accept medium to high amounts of misalignment and it also provides easy assembly for your machines. So this is actually a standard type of coupling with a tire element, two flanges, and also a standard table lock push. So Donald, what is the typical lifespan of a coupling like this? Well, that's a tricky question, but of course, you know, when we're dealing with uh, customers in different applications, you know, you've got to understand that each application is unique. But typically, we look at two to five years of uh, lifespan, or the elements, which in the tire coupling is this is shown in front of me. Uh, when it comes to the hubs, which are connected with the tire element, you should be getting five to ten years. Obviously, there might be some corrosion issues that you're facing, which could affect uh, the lifespan. But that again is application specific. So, um, if you keep having to change your tire element or having to change your flanges regularly, there might be something wrong. That can be an indication you need to change something about your application. Okay. And that's what could be a gap. So what kind of problems could lead to a situation like this? Especially in, in industries that we face, yeah. you know, very harsh environments, you're going to face things like high heat, high vibration, uh, and corrosion can also be another uh, challenge for couplings. Mm -hmm. And then again, if you've undersized your coupling. I see. So how do you recommend that your customers do in this situation? 
Well, we love visiting our customers. So I think that uh, really gives you a feel and a sense of what's going on on the ground because ultimately our customers know best about their applications and their factory and their processes that they have to follow. Um, so customer visit is always great. But typically in today's connected world, we, we can probably get the application data. So if you send us the power, the speed, uh, shaft sizes, the distance between the shafts, we can help to check the design. And if you've got some good photos, you know, we can often like, lead to, to something, give you an idea of what could be going wrong. So oftentimes we do have um, customers who use different couplings, mm -hmm. um, which might not be suitable. So based on your experience, how would you advise customers uh, you know, on which kind of couplings to use? Yeah, perfect. Good question. So, I mean, couplings is quite a unique um, segment of product yeah. because there are so many different designs out there in the market, not just under our great brand, but also our competitors. And we've done a bit of an overview table, which gives you some guidelines as to how you should select a coupling mm -hmm. based on what you want to do as a, as a customer and your decisions. Mm -hmm. So, whether it's price, whether it's lifetime, uh, reliability. Um, and ultimately, it really comes down to your decision as an engineer, as the customer that's using the product, what you want to use. Um, if you're interested in longer lifetime, we're the expert at this, so we can help you design and select something that's going to give you really optimum life. And of course, just general maintenance practices. If you follow good guidelines in our catalog, you'll probably get a reasonable lifetime. Right, okay. So um, we do have customers in cement, quarry, and steel mill industries. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of companies do you normally see in these industries? Yeah, well, so big heavy industries, right? So cement, steel, um, always gear couplings, grid couplings, mm -hmm. all over the factories. Um, specifically because they are, um, you're able to really customize them. Right. So gear couplings are particularly useful, uh, very powerful design mm -hmm. so you can design them to sorry select them to to be really small and compact mm -hmm. and therefore you need to do some modifications and make it a special coupling right. so gear couplings a lot um, and then grid couplings right. grid couplings because uh, you can see the small sample we have here um, grid couplings because they're quite resilient mm -hmm. they can reduce vibration and in these heavy industries there is always a lot of vibration and that can be an application killer. Yep. So those would be the two big ones that I see. Right. So in what situations would you recommend grid coupling? So grid couplings, again, very similar to a gear coupling in that they both need lubrication, so grease lubrication typically. Yep. Um, they're very good at uh, transmitting torque, mm -hmm. but a unique point of a grid coupling is that it can dampen vibration. So okay. in some applications we're using rubber, Course they're able to dampen vibration, which helps to save other components of your um, application. Yeah. So with a grid coupling, you're getting this uh, high torque capacity and some vibration dampening. Mm -hmm. So for areas uh, where you might have a, a belt conveyor yeah. um, or a, a blower, a fan blower that's uh, creating vibration yeah. going backwards through the system, mm -hmm. a grid coupling can help reduce that vibration. So what that does is if you've got a specific motor and the bearings are facing challenges due to vibration, mm -hmm. then a grid coupling can help reduce that impact on the, the bearings of the motor, mm -hmm. for example. I see. Okay. So Donald, uh, do you offer gear coupling? Interesting question. So we've partnered with a company called ESCO. Um, they're a great European business, mm -hmm. uh, been around for many, many years, mm -hmm. and they have developed a great patented product ESCO gear couplings mm -hmm. and they've got a very unique feature called multi-crowning which really adds uh, that extra mini selling proposition. So that's mm -hmm. why we've partnered with uh, ESCO to develop and build uh, this offering for you. Right, okay. So speaking about the multi-crown, mm -hmm. can you elaborate a little bit more about how it works? Okay. <laughs> so uh, multi-crowning is, is the process. In a gear coupling you have uh, gear teeth and when you do a multi-crowning process, it's a continuous curve of the team. And effectively what it does, now I don't want to talk too much about how it's done, because that is a patented process, mm -hmm. but more of what it does for you. So um, a number of gear coupling brands also do a version of multi-crowning, but ESCOs is unique in that when you have full misalignment, you can still transmit the full torque 
capacity of the company. Mm -hmm. Some of the competitors, as soon as you get into an extended range of misalignment, you have to reduce the tour capacity of the company. Right. So that's one of the benefits that even mm -hmm. at full misalignment, the company still can deliver the full tour. Mm -hmm. So that helps to uh, ensure that the company is going to survive in mm -hmm. strange circumstances, mm -hmm. especially in steel and uh, cement industries. So what's the typical lifespan of a gear parking that we can expect? So again, I've got a you know, small disclaimer uh, that when you do a selection for a coupling, that's the start of the lifetime effectively. Mm -hmm. So if you do a bad selection, you're going to run into some trouble mm -hmm. with lifetime. Mm -hmm. But a well-selected, well-maintained gear coupling can last you, I've seen couplings up to 15 years in service and more, mm -hmm. um, especially when the coupling is well-selected and well-maintained. Mm -hmm. you know, so regular maintenance, sort of annual service health check, um, and regular grease changing. Mm -hmm. So if you can do that, then you end up having a really extended lifetime for a gear company. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why they are used uh, significantly in big, heavy applications because of their reliability. Right. Okay. All right. I hope you have a deeper understanding of these different types of companies and how they benefit our applications. Feel free to drop us an email or call us if you have any questions. We are always here to help. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll share more tips with you in our next video. Goodbye.